No need to bring a gift. There'll be enough. Day 2. Time, approximately 4 o'clock p.m. Location, Red Trotter's Ridge. Big 52 North Branch. Usually, wearing a full environmental suit is not considered the cutting edge of equestrian fashion. But every pony has to admit that it does bring some neat advantages. First of all, if you were to survive a direct hit from a bellfire spell, you'd probably live long enough to die of thirst inside the suit. The second good thing is that it is both waterproof and mildly heatproof, so you'll never need an umbrella or sunscreen. Oh, and it's lemon yellow, so it's nearly impossible not to spot you under almost any imaginable circumstance, except perhaps being buried underneath an avalanche of lemons. Obviously, there are some moments when you don't want to be found. As if Puppy cared. Hi, I'm Puppy Smiles. The foal in the yellow suit smiled at the new pair of ponies in front of her. They seemed quite similar to the trio the other night, but with less reckless and a bit, well, better armed. There was a unicorn mare that had a riot shotgun, and an earth pony mare with a big spear strapped to her side. This information could have been of some importance. If only Puppy had some basic understanding of weaponry. The unicorn was the first to talk. What are you doing in Red Trotter's territory, fool? And what the hay is with that weird suit? Added the earth pony. I'm looking for my mom. Puppy replied enthusiastically, pointing a hoof more or less in the direction where the road was going. She's that way. The two tribe ponies exchanged a glare. Then the unicorn spoke again. Okay. And what's your mother's name? Is she a Red Trotter? What's a Red Trotter? The unicorn showed the first signals of growing impatience, but the Earth Pony answered her question for her. We are the Red Trotters. We control the Transequestrian Route 52 from here to Salt Cube City. If you have business in the Big 52, you do it through us. So, what's your mother's name? My mommy's called Rainy Days. She's super cool, and she always sings for me, and she's a great cook, too. She's the best pony ever, and uh, when I'm big, I want to be just like her. Yeah, sure. I got the point. Snapped the unicorn. Sorry, kid, but I don't know any rainy days. She's not a red shrotter. If you want to pass, you have to pay a fee. Uh, okie dokie. I have... Puppy started searching inside the various pockets of her suit. She collected some objects along her way, mostly broken toys and things she thought were interesting. Maybe she could give something to these ponies. After all, you gotta care, you gotta share, right? What about this? Manipulating things without her teeth was quite a problem. She had to use her hooves, and that made even harder by the fact that she was wearing her stupid suit. Please wait. I'm almost done. Uh... Assistance. The suit is equipped with a weak manipulation spell. Access your inventory from the HUD, and ask for the wanted item. What? By now, the two mares were sick of waiting, and the fool speaking to herself like a crazy old mare was just the last straw. The unicorn nodded to the earth pony. The latter gave a sigh, grabbing her spear, and stabbed Puppy in the neck with a single powerful strike, piercing the suit and its occupant, killing her instantly. Puppy's smiles didn't even see it coming. She was busy listening to the suit and went down like a bag of stones. She's dead anyway. A fool wandering around out here is nothing more than walking glue. If only she got here two days ago, said the unicorn. The earth pony nodded with a troubled expression to her companion. Yeah. Poor Ridge Racer. The earth pony retrieved her spear and looked in puzzlement at the pink smoke that was rising from the hole in the suit. Hey, pony. What's that? The unicorn scrunched up her head as she said, You must have broke some talisman in this suit. It could be poisonous. Stay back. But leave the body here like this? The earth pony hesitated, trying to keep away from the pink smoke. Rat roaches will take care of her. After that little smoke show, I don't think the suit's worth looting. Let's move. The patrol isn't finished yet. The two ponies trotted away leaving the main road and heading down to a low ridge not far from there. The body of the little pony lay in the middle of the road for half an hour, 
and during that time, the small pink cloud surrounding her didn't seem to dissolve. Day 2. Time, approximately, 4.30 p.m. Location, Red Trotter's Ridge, Big 25 North Branch. The first telltale sign that this story was going on was the automated voice suit coming back to life with a series of crackles. Initializing system. Checking version. Warning. Version number not corresponding. Starting in emergency mode. Version 0 0.2. Checking equipment status. All systems online. Major breach detected. Repair spells activated. Resuming last section. Loading personal data for subject 001. Puppy smiles. Subject. Deceased. Condition. Stable. All clear. Puppy's eyes blinked for a moment inside the helmet, just as if she had awoke from a pleasant sleep. The foil yawned and a droplet of pink glittered in fluid fell from her mouth and onto the helmet and suit, disappearing almost immediately as it was absorbed by the glass. Ah, uh, five more minutes, Mom. And the filly turned around, still surrounded by the pink cloud that was now slowly fading. Breach repaired. Subject insulation from environmental external completed. Lazily, the filly got up and looked around. At first, she frowned, then seemed to remember something. Oh, right. Mom's not here. What was I doing before I was going to sleep? Bobby tried to scratch her head, but her hoof found the helmet in its way. For a moment, she frowned again, shrugging, and kept scratching the helmet with a deep, thoughtful look. Retrieving temporary memory. Query. Last performed action before losing senses. Negotiating passage. Negotiating what? Interacting with self-proclaimed Red Trotter ponies. Fancy words again. Red who? Talking with pretty ponies. At last, something comprehensible. Oh, right. Pretty ponies. Now I remember. Uh, where are they gone? Location of Red Trotters is unknown. Adding finding the subjects to the active mission list. Puppy raised an eyebrow with a stumped expression. Do we have a to-do list? Since when? List initiated 23 hours ago. Objectives on the list, 4. Wow, we have a lot of things to do. Four's a lot, right? What's on the list? Main objective, reach MOM. Secondary objective, get rid of spacesuit. Secondary objective, confront Count Horstile or keep avoiding him. Secondary objective, find Red Trotters. After listening to the list, the filly in yellow trapped, tapped her helm with a hoof, a thoughtful expression on her muzzle. Think, think, think. Muffins! No, wait, that wasn't it. After several minutes, the foal nodded, a new resolve shining in her eyes. Okie dokie. Play some music. Uh, the one with the chatty pony. Puppy trotted along the road, following the arrow and listening to the radio with a spring in her step. The area surrounding Route 52 was now a scorched land dotted with rocks and ridges. It was hard to see very far because of the irregularity in the terrain, and this would have been a problem if Puppy even cared. Obviously, she didn't. Hey, Mr. Voice. Did you say something about picking stuff from my pockets? Affirmative. The suit is equipped with a weak manipulation spell. Um, how does it work? Loading instructions. Selecting easy version for foals and derpy. Name the object you need. If it is in your possession, it will be put in front of you. Uh, muffins! A box of 200-year-old muffins floated in front of Puppy. She giggled. It looks so silly hovering in the air like that. Hey, this is fun. Sarsaparilla. A bottle of sarsaparilla replaced the muffins. Toy cart. This time, a small toy cart in really bad condition floated in front of the foal. <laughs> we need more stuff. I like this guessing game. Negative. This is not a guessing game. It is inventory management. Puppy took a rock and put it in her pocket. A rock! The rock obviously floated out of the pocket, and listed lazily in front of her. Yay! It works! Then it was put away again, and the stone was labeled the Rock of Destiny. But since Pumpy was not so good with reading, she didn't notice. 
Trotting down the road, the filly kept asking for everything she had in her backpack, which wasn't very much. Actually, she owned just four objects, but she had big plans for the future. Oh, and we need more music. Day 2. Time, approximately 7 p.m. Location, Red Trotter's Camp. Big 52, North Branch. The settlement was little more than a dirty bunch of ruined half-shacks surrounded by a moat. Its barricade looked more like the result of a road crash between some old carts rather than a purposely built defense. Puppy was blissfully unaware of all this as she kept trotting towards the town, singing along with the radio until the road in front of her suddenly exploded with a small pillar of dust. Hey! I told you to stop! Right! There! Puppy looked towards the barricade. She could see there was a pony some 50 meters away, and he was pointing a large gun at her. The filly sat down, waved a hoof, and smiled. Hi, I'm Puppy Smiles. The pony with the hunting rifle peeked from behind the barricade, didn't seem much impressed. Okay, take that goldfish bowl off your head and show your face. Um, I'd totally do that if I could. But I'm stuck inside. Puppy pondered for a moment. Actually, it's on the to-do list. Great. <clears throat> Just great. Then stand there where I can see you and put down all your weapons. I don't think I have weapons with me. I have a rock. Does that count? I can throw it. She offered with enthusiasm. The guard pony face hoofed. A hey, double size. Go and search her. You, with the yellow suit. Just stand there and behave. Okie dokie loki. Puppy smiled, but for some reason her answer startled the pony behind the barricade. Just say okay. Don't try anything fun, and maybe no pony will get hurt. Do as I say now. Don't resist, and let Double Size do his work. The brig-bound unicorn male approached Puppy, looking at the smiling filly through the glass of her helmet. The light was beginning to fade, and now her eyes were just a bit pinkish, although it was hard to see thanks to all the pink light coming from the helmet's HUD. Wow, that's a mighty fine ride suit you have here. Never seen one like this before. Yeah, it's super yellow, and it's smart, I can do magics. Look at this! <laughs> Muffins! The same muffin box from before levitated in front of Puppy. Wow! Integrated inventory management with a lesser manipulation spell. This thing must cost a fortune. Where'd you find it? A pretty pony gave it to me in Canterlot. So, you're from Canterlot. Double size seemed skeptical. The filly nodded proudly. Uh-huh. The place with the big castle on top of the mountain right at the beginning of the Big 52. That's it, replied Puppy, smiling. Wow. That explains why you're wearing a full red suit, at least. Okay, let's get back to business. Show me your pass. Puppy stared blankly at the brown unicorn. My what? You don't have a pass? Didn't you meet the patrol on the road coming here? I met two pretty ponies. One was a nerd pony like me, the other was a unic... unic... unicron. They were super nice and super pretty. Ah, yes, yes. Rattling bones and frozen soda, said Double Size, cutting her short. Didn't they say something about needing a passage fee? Ah, uh, I don't remember. They were talking for a bit, and then they went away and left me alone and sleepy. The unicorn sighed and called for the pony at the barricade. Hey, the foal's clean, but it seems that Boney and Soda are given free passes today. The kid met them, but she doesn't have a pass. Now what? Just take something from her that's worth a ticket and give her a pass. Uh, okay. The Earth Pony stripped Puppy of everything she had but the rock and the suit. Actually, he tried to unlock that, but the harness seemed to be sealed shut from the inside. Oh well, I guess it's just how things go. Sorry, kid. He then gave Puppy a flattened tin can with a red stain in the middle. Here you go. Special discount for folds. I'm telling my mom that you've been nice to me. Thank you, Mr. Pretty Pony. Ah, right. Speaking of that, 
What's a fool in a rad suit doing all alone on the Big 52? That's not a nice place. I'm gonna find my mom! Puppy said, as she looked around as if she was trying to align herself with something, then pointed a hoof at the high ridge of the southeast. There! Okay, gotta go. Bye-bye. Without waiting for a response, the fool merrily trot away. But, the only thing in that direction is the carnival. Wait a second, kid. There's dangerous business going out there. Double Size raised a hoof, but stopped himself. This was the wasteland, and she wasn't family. Why bother? The filly in the yellow wandered off the beaten path and explored among the rocks and ridges. She found some sort of track, a winding trail running down and up the landscape, just as if somebody had gone around dragging a couple of pointy sticks over the ground. Bobby Smiles sniffed for a moment at the trails before ignoring them. For the foal, rock climbing and jumping from stone to stone was just a super fun game. So, with a hop, skip, and a jump, the evening became night as the foal ventured deeper and deeper into the wastes. Day 2. Time. Approximately 10.30 p.m. Location. The Carnival. Wasteland. A large barn stood at the bottom of a narrow valley. Its once friendly coating of pink paint was now faded and cracked. It was protected by a fence that ran all around the surrounding ridges, with an automated turret placed at fairly regular intervals. The building and the fence were in bad shape, and so were the turrets, but some of them continued to slowly sweep side to side, guarding the perimeter. Warning. Automated point defense turrets detected. Turrets are set on hostile mode. Threat level medium. The word hostile immediately put Puppy on alert. She stopped for a moment, looking around her surroundings. The count again? Where? That pony's persistent. Ah, uh, better safe than sorry, I guess. The little pony hid herself behind a rock and waited to see if Mr. Horse Tile was up to something. Shush the music, Mr. Voice. We're hiding. She held her breath and strained her ears to hear if some pony was moving. Establishing communication bridge with the defense system. Engaging protocol. Asking for clearance. Permission granted. The way is clear. Please proceed. Shush, I said. There might be some pony here. Could be the Count. We have to be snooper sneaky. Puppy crawled out from cover and glanced over her shoulder in case something was creeping up behind her, before slowly moving towards the fence. The turrets almost immediately pointed in her direction, but their dots on her compass changed from red to pink, and the guns turned to their default positions. Hey, Mr. Voice, I told you to stop the music. Affirmative. The radio has been muted. So, why do I hear music? Sound source detected. The music comes from inside the mom building. From inside? Mom's inside that barn? With the music and everything else? Mom's throwing a party? Yay! Puppy instantly stopped hiding and got onto her hooves. She ran downhill straight into the barn doors. When the filly arrived, she bucked open the doors, jumped inside, and yelled, Surprise! The barn's insides consisted of a single, large hall, with two open lofts, one above the entrance and the other on the opposite, short side of the structure. The floor was made of flattened and pressed ground, covered sparsely with hay, and the walls were decorated with old streamers and garlands. From the ceiling hung a sorry-looking piñata, a lot of limp, deflated balloons, and other old and half-destroyed decorations. The barn was barely lit by a couple of flickering lamps. The only other thing that seemed to work properly here were the speakers that were playing music at an almost deafening volume. Right in the middle of the room, there was a long table prepared for a pony. A party. With colored dishes and plastic glasses with names and everything else. There were plenty of guests sitting at the table. A bag of flour, a pile of rocks, a bucket filled with something unrecognizable, and a chunk of dust, all of which wore a party hat. Oh, and there were skeletons too. No less than a dozen lifeless little ponies sat around the table, wearing festive party hats and staring blankly into empty plates. There were even a couple of corpses that looked like mummies and skeletons. Actually, one of them might have passed for a very hungry pony. A large pile of white bones lurked in the far corner of the barn, Warning. Mild radiation detected. Warning. Contaminating agent detected in the air. Analyzing. Nitrous oxide. 
Threat level. Negligible. Oh, look. A new guest. A figure rose from its seat at the guest of honor. It was a pony with a metallic, frizzling voice that sounded like an old vinyl. In the dim light, it looked like it was just a pink pony with an even pinker mane when it approached. Puppy Smiles noticed that it was moving on a set of wheels. It was wearing motorized roller skates. Well, well, well. Look at you. I guess you're here for the masquerade. I'm super sorry to inform you that it was cancelled, but you can keep the costume. It rocks. Weird thing number two. Usually, ponies moved their mouths when they spoke. Instead, this pony had an unmoving smile painted on her muzzle, and when she talked, her eyes flashed with a creepy blue light. Um, are you a robot pony? Asked Puppy with some hesitation, remembering all the times her mommy had told her that she shouldn't point it out if other ponies looked weird. Well, yes, I am. What a smart pony you are. Recreational Pink Bot Mark II Prototype 03. And this is my birthday party. Want to join? I can free some seats, you know. Some of the guests are getting a bit grumpy, and they don't participate very much. The robot rolled over one of the skeletons, picking up the whole corpse and tossing it into the corner with the others, keeping just the party hat. Here you go. What's your name? Asked the pink bot, putting the hat atop Puppy's helmet. Um, I'm Puppy Smiles. I, uh, I'm looking for my mom. She's supposed to be somewhere in this place. Fantastic. Maybe she'll join us when she arrives. Now sit down. Would you like some cake? Puppy Smiles wasn't in the mood for a party. She was supposed to find her mom in this place, not a stupid birthday party. But maybe the robot pony could help her if she just played along for a bit. So the foal took her seat and looked around at the other guests. They were creepy to say the least. There were those skulls looking at her. All those inanimate objects dressed as guests and two super skinny mummies, and... Wait a moment. A mummy was returning her glare? Please. <laughs> Make this... <laughs> and... And she was speaking, too. The little mummy was a unicorn fool with a pale yellow coat and an orange mane. She was losing hair and seemed very ill. The filly was giggling, but it wasn't a happy sound. It was like she couldn't help it. Her eyes were swollen, and fresh blood dropped from her nose deepening the red streaks that had round down her muzzle. Please, <laughs> I just want to go home. She was muttering those words as if she had said them a million times. Like if she said them enough, she would wake up and this nightmare would be over. Puppy felt a chill running down her spine. It passed from her shoulders to her tail and back up again. This place was wrong. She wanted to leave. But Mom could be here. She could be one of those bone heaps. A surge of panic threatened to overwhelm Puppy. This was just like the horror story where the super nice robot goes boing and starts hunting ponies. Too, way too many ponies had already suffered in this carnival of horrors. The in, and another wasn't far from sharing their fate. Not to mention that her mom could be on the list, especially if she was heading here. I don't know if she had already arrived. No wait, the robot had said something about her not being there. But the robot could have lied, couldn't she? Who cares? That pink thing was baked bad, and Puppy didn't want to play her game anymore. For a moment, Puppy's eyes met those of the giggling foal at the table. That little pony missed her mom, too. His barn was a bad place. Run away. Now, go home. Puppy didn't stop looking at the other pony's eyes until the young unicorn nodded and tried to leave her seat. The pink bot moved to intercept her. But Puppy Smiles was planning to take up all of her attention. Where's my mom? She asked, rising from her seat. We'll go looking for your mom when the party is over. Okie dokie. Would you like some sarsaparilla? The little unicorn filly staggered away towards the entrance of the barn. Excuse me, the party is not finished yet. You can't leave. Where's my mom? Puppy walked towards the pink pony droid, turning its attention back to her. Now, now, please behave. Don't spoil the party. How about some pin the tail on the pony? Puppy smiles, eyes flared up with pink flames. Where's my mom? What did you do to her? Error. Mom object not found. Please do not get angry. 
I'm sure your mommy will be here to pick you up very soon. The unicorn stopped for a moment, leaning against the door to keep herself upright. She could barely stand. Walking almost seemed like torture. The pink pot rolled purposefully towards her. Stop right there. You can't leave without permission of an adult. Don't ignore me. She was supposed to leave here, stupid robot. You're not going to hurt my mom or any pony else. Puppy snarled and lowered her head, assuming an aggressive stance. Rock! She muttered in a deep and menacing tone. Please don't use the S word. Submissive measures activated. Subject immune to toxins. Brute force required. Activating sick. Clank. Where? Puppy's eyes were burning so bright that the helmet was filled with pink flames. The villain yellow jumped at the robot's face, hitting it repeatedly with the rock of destiny. Is? With a feral snarl, Puppy wrapped her hooves around the robot's neck and headbutted it as hard as she could. The force of the blow created a spiderweb of cracks that ran across the helmet, but it also broke off the pink bot's faceplate, revealing the circuitry and mechanisms inside its head. My? With one hoof, Puppy Smiles kept her hold on the robot's neck, while the other she struck repeatedly at its exposed face. With each strike, she tore cables and vital components from the machine, until she hit a talisman. The robot exploded as if it was filled with pink and yellow fireworks, launching Puppy Smiles across the room. Mom! Puppy's flight ended rather abruptly, as she collapsed on one of the automated turrets that had popped up after she had decided to go medieval on the robot. The impact severed the power cable, causing it to shut down with a plaintive whine. The remaining turrets locked on and unleashed a barrage of colorful beams that scorched Puppy's suit, or were unable to penetrate it. Stop it! Tell me where my mom is! The filly charged at a nearby turret head-on, slamming into it hard enough to knock it completely off the target. The turret continued to fire wildly, now hitting the roof, and proved to be far more effective against the barn's already weakened load-bearing structure than it had on the magically resistant environmental suit. Puppy turned and finished it off with a buck that was so strong it tore the turret off its mount, silencing the machine, but not before the ceiling began to crack and fall apart. Mom? Mom? Where are you? Mom? Ignoring the barn that was collapsing around her, the foal ran towards the bone, stacked in the corner. Mr. Voice? Do you see my mom? Where is she? Error. Destination reached. Minister Morale Hub already found. What are you saying now? I want my mom. You said she was here. With a last deep rumble muffled by centuries of falling dust filling the air, the barn fell on Puppy's head, burying her alive. As the first lights of dawn tried to pierce the ever-present curtain of cloud, a small emaciated unicorn filly crawled out of the defense perimeter of the former MOM structure. The turrets lay still, having lost their power source. Even the music had fallen silent. Its two hundred years' lament finally over. Small patches of flame burned among the debris, failing to consume the remains as rotten wood provided an inadequate fuel. Day 3. Time. Approximately 9.15 a.m. Location. The Carnival. Wasteland. Even now, the cursed place couldn't find peace. I didn't ask you to find this party of horrors place. I asked you to find Mom, said a muffled voice from under the ruins. Negative, you asked. The suit launched an audio file with Puppy's voice. Mr. Voice, where's Mom? That's exactly what I'm saying. Affirmative. Ministry of Morale's nearest functioning hub was located and marked on the map. It was set as primary objective and reached 11 hours ago. Then it was destroyed. Yes, I remember that part. It exploded twice. Negative. It is impossible to explode twice. Major damage is repaired. Systems fully functional and ready. Puppy Smiles went silent for several minutes, trying to think. Going harsh on Mr. Voice was useless. Mostly because it wasn't anything to hit. So she had to be smarter. She was a smart pony, right? That pink bot had said so after all. Okie dokie lokie. It's useless to cry over spilt milk. I mean, under spilled barn. Mom wasn't here, but she said there are other places. 
So, what's next? Warning. Despite the perfectly clear explanations, there are still some major misunderstand. Ah, shut up. What's the next mom's place we have to check out? Really. Mr. Voice could be all work and no play at times. Dumb suit. The voice went mute for a moment. If it had a more complex artificial intelligence, it could have said something else. Or at least felt frustrated. But this wasn't the case. The program was designed to be efficient and obey. So, that was all it could do. Next mom location marked as primary objective. Location set as target on the compass. A new pink arrow appeared on the compass as Puppy finished pulling herself free from the rubble. The filly jumped down from the ruins and shook herself, trying to get rid of the dirt and dust on her coat. See? Everything's easier when you collaborate. Affirmative. Cooperation is magic. A metallic chuckle erupted the conversation and caused Puppy to turn around, seeing a buzzing sprite bot that she'd met a couple days ago. Oh, it's you, questioner. Hi. The filly smiled. It's... Watcher. Anyway, that was quite random, wasn't it? What, you mean the party? Trust me, you didn't miss anything. Worst party ever. Everybody was dead. Ugh, quite literally. So, did you find your mom? Nopey mopey. Puppy frowned for a moment. Then she smiled again. Nobody have a lot of places to check, so that's okay. She must be somewhere, right? Um, yes, I guess. The bot paused for a good while. And may I ask you where you're going now? There! The filly pointed with her hoof, then added, This time I'm feeling lucky. So you're going to check the next location of Mom in that direction? Sure. The robot took another long pause before speaking. And you're feeling lucky about that. Yep. Oh, well, why not at this point? Very well. Puppy, I've got to go. Have a nice trip and try and stay out of trouble. Sure, Mr. Question. Have a nice day. The Sprite Bot turned and floated away, proudly broadcasting the March of the Paris Sprites as it did so. Oh, right! Mr. Voice, put on some music! Day 3. Time approximately 2 p.m. Location, Red Trotter's Flats. Big 52, North Branch. Puppy was on Route 52. She had left the rocky area behind, and the landscape ahead was now mostly flat, dotted with the occasional ruin of an old farm. The silhouette of a big city began to emerge from the dusty air, uh, some kilometers in front of her. She could see skyscrapers on center, and a large collapsed dome to one side. Along the road there were carcasses of old carts, some of the fast little racing carts, while others were big hauling cargo trucks. All of them shared the same fate left alone to rust in the middle of nowhere. Hey, you, wait. Puppy turned to see the pair of voices that had called out to her. The filly in yellow stopped to see who was coming and recognized the two mares from the other day. She smiled and waved a hoof. One of them stopped a little more than 30 meters away and righted an assault rifle. While the other drew near, assuming a cautious stance but leaving her power lance sheathed, Okay, Miss Miracle. Stay put, nobody's gonna get hurt. Um, are we playing a game? Unicorn kept a rifle aimed at Puppy, while the other one answered. Yeah, something like that. Wanna play? Great! Can I start? Huh? 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 Puppy had already began to jump in place like the hyperactive fool she was. Sure, why not? I'll ask you a question and you try to answer. If you don't want to reply, you lose. Got it? Yay! A guessing game. I love, love, love guessing games. Ask me something. Ask me anything. Great. Question number one. How come you're still alive and unhurt after getting a power lance to the throat? A what? Where? This one was hard. Probably had no idea what a power lance was, but it seemed that there was some way to swallow it and not give it an owie by doing that. Um, 
Pass. The two mares exchanged a glance again. Maybe she's a little retarded? Offered the Earth Pony. The unicorn sighed. Well, at least try and ask her something else. Okay, so... Kid? Why did you go to the carnival? You mean that old barn? Well, the stupid Mr. Voice told me my mom was there. Guess what? She wasn't. And in her place, I found the worst party ever. There was this mad pink pony that wanted to hurt my mom. And I got upset, but the robot exploded and a strange little thing started throwing nasty light around at me. And I don't remember very well what happened next, but I think the barn fell on my head. That happens a lot to me lately. Puppy stopped for a moment, pondering. I hope that skinny filly is safe. Ridge Racer will live. And that's the only thing that keeps my friend from pulling the trigger. The Earth Pony took a long breath. So, you resurrected, trotted all the way to the carnival, destroyed that cursed place, and saved Pony's sister, just by accident? I... I don't remember doing all that, but if you say so... And you were just looking for your mom, all this time? Yeah, do you know where she is? Yeah, she's retarded. The Earth Pony face hoofed while the unicorn behind her couldn't hold in a snicker. After a short laugh, the unicorn's expression became more serious. But she did save my family. I'm in debt to her. So now what, Bony? Asked the Earth Pony. Yeah, I don't know. Rattling Bones lowered the rifle and approached Puppy Smiles, who smiled at her. Somehow, that enthusiasm and innocence stole a small smile from the hardened unicorn as she placed a hoof atop Puppy's glass helmet. I'm not sure if you're good or bad news, but I owe you one. So thanks. Rattling Bones took a rectangular scrap of metal with a white, half-eaten apple painted on it, offering the object the filly in yellow. Here, take this. It's a pass. If you're going to Salt Cube City, show it to the guards and they'll let you inside. Understand? Puppy's eyes widened with glee as she stared at the gift. Wow, thanks, a present. I love presents. Thank you super much, Miss Pretty Pony. Unicorn continued. You put an end to a nightmare for our entire tribe and gave me back the only thing I cared for. I hope you find what you're looking for, little ghost. Duh, aren't you guys cute? Mocked the Earth Pony. Ah, just shut up and let's keep moving, Soda. We got a patrol to finish. Hey, are you crying, Bony? Ah, just shut up. And don't you dare laugh or tell the story to any pony. Guess what? Now I feel sorry for killing her. The two ponies left, heading in the opposite direction of the pink arrow. Puppy watched them trot away and waved her hoof as they disappeared behind a ridge. I like pretty ponies. They're pretty. Puppy smiled before setting off in the direction of the big city. Hey, Mr. Voice. Can I ask you something? Affirmative. State your request. When we find my mom, are you going to go away? I mean, I don't want you to go away. Negative. As an effect of the Little Horn Agent, this piece of equipment is immediately used to you. Um... That means that we're together forever? I can keep you with me when we find Mom? Affirmative. Puppy smiled, listening as always only to part of the explanation that she wanted to hear. Alright, Mr. Voice. You already know what we need to do, don't you? Affirmative. Analyzing the previous interactions of your requests is predictable with 95% accuracy. The radio began playing and Puppy Smile started to sing along. There was still a lot of road to trot and she was by herself as always, but Puppy Smiles was a filly on a mission, and she had that stubbornness that only came from ignorance. Besides, she wasn't really alone. She had one friend that she was well aware of, maybe a couple that she didn't even suspect. Footnote. Level up. I think we've already discussed this. Negative. Level up is mandatory in FOE ca canon. Okay, jeez, I can understand folks' frustration. Okay, then. New quest perk added. Living is mandatory. Now, you can gain level.